welcome to the Federation X podcast. We're doing this at a special time on a Thursday night. And as we start, I realized that I didn't rename my guest, but you are going to recognize the name as soon as I say it, because here with me tonight, Johnny Rude. What's up, Slurs? I'm doing okay. How are you all doing? I am fantastic and super glad that we're doing this. I know mm -hmm. that uh, we've been talking about getting it together and making it happen for a little while now. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell you, we've already got three people on the live stream and I'm sure there are more coming. A three and, whole whopping people, dang. Hey, we, we're like right on schedule. Mm -hmm. The rest of them won't pick up on it until they realize we're doing it. And Philly Fats is one of the ones that is on the live stream. So Philly, glad you're with us. And uh, we're gonna talk about some interesting stuff tonight. We've We've had a chance to break down a little bit about what we want to go over, what mm -hmm. we want to dig into. Uh, you know, Weed Man just showed up. I know he's happy to see Johnny Root. <laughs> he's my number one fan. Let's be serious here. Yeah, you can't miss that. Hey, is there any chance that we might get a reality check appearance while you're on here? I don't know who that is, man. I mean, that could that could be anybody. He's He might be too real for this podcast, though. He might be too real. I'm a big fan of uh, reality check. And so is Gino, apparently. I brought that up. I said reality check owned Gino at one point in time, and he was just like, that's not how that went. He got a little defensive. I remember I remember we were doing that podcast with our father, right? And he spent more of it talking about reality check than we talked about talk to our father. Like our father was sitting there like trying to participate, but he hadn't been following the boards. He didn't know what was going on. Right. And right. so like Gino went on and on about it was it was great. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, I see Miller's on. I see uh, Man of War's on. I see your brother Wheels is out there. Mm -hmm. Good news. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to replay Wheelchair Eric on the podcast so people can enjoy the stylings of Benjamin F. Blair. Man, I love Benny, but he can't carry a note in a bucket, I'm just saying. But that would be good, like a good intermission theme to play while you're waiting for stuff <laughs> to load and, and things like that, or you're pulling people into calls. You can just be right back and just pop in Wheelchair Eric. I think that yeah. would work out well. That would be perfect. Um, so, hey, listen, we we did a little prep work and caught up, and we had a chance to kind of plan a, a couple of topics. Uh, I may or may not have planned a little bit of a surprise for you as well. Um, oh, no. Yeah, you'll be, I'm sure, pleased. Um, okay. But what, what I want to start with is I want to catch people up on <clears throat> what's been going on with you. Like, it's been a while since you've really played. Like, I know you dabbled a little bit when we started the comeback, and mm -hmm. we had a Tristan Rude. Uh, that, that was down. pretty fun. Yeah. Rude is the, as a right wing hack commentator. I love it. It was great. That's, so, first of all, I love that you you cast Johnny Rude out there as a guy who went right wing, used alternative media to smear the good guys. Like, I thought mm -hmm. that was a great angle. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's definitely a, a it was it was fun, but mm -hmm. it didn't stick. Um, I had other obligations at the time. I couldn't really, you know, devote as much time as I would have liked to it. You right. know how that goes. So just so you know, Miller's on the live stream, and he said he should use wheelchair Eric to fill all the dead air on the podcast that he does. <laughs> we would well, be. We'd hear I'm actually that. really impressed with Gino. Like lately, when he's been on these shows, he doesn't do the dead air. Like. Maybe it's because he's surrounded by five other guys to carry him on their backs. Right. That, you know, he can kind of sneak on by. But generally speaking, he isn't just sitting there clicking as he used to. It, so. What was that price that clicked Yeah, when Price was the clicker. That's 100% <laughs> the case. Um, did you catch, they did the, the Ruslut show on Tuesday night, and it was all the feedback and outcome from the fantasy draft that we did? I, Have you seen that yet? I didn't see that. I saw the first draft that Max and the other ones did on that really shitty show. Yeah. I saw the one you, the important people did, you, the commission, well, well three out of four important people anyway, um, did with the CDBA and good and et cetera, et cetera. And right. then I saw a little bit of one with Stuntman on it, but I had to cut it out because I had to leave where I was at. But uh, yeah, I saw a bit here and there. So what I thought was really good is, is, Stuntman was really good at realizing things were kind of dying or there was a bit of dead air and filling it with actually good content. Like, I, I don't know if you caught that, but I thought Colt was great on the show. Well, Colt's a really smart guy, so I can definitely expect him to, you know, 
be able to keep people on task and actually provide good insightful content. I remember we had the first time we had him on, on the show, he talked all about alternatives to sim, traditional sim engines. I mean, he had a huge conversation about his ideas for that. This was back when Rasa was still kind of there, you know? Yeah. And so he always, he, he always has a lot of really good ideas. And so I'm glad that he was able to actually get some of that out there. You know, he's a very thoughtful guy, I find. He is. I, and it's been entertaining to have him around. He played a new character since the, the reboot started. And I think he had to take a little bit of a step back. There's a little bit of... Uh, impact that's been going on personally from being a school teacher, but I think getting them to come back in uh, and, and get back at it. I don't know. Think you've seen the new character? I I drafted the new character over Colt Calhoun, who I think Lars took a turn before me. But I, like I was watching Colt go and went, "That's fine." The, no one's going to pick the new character, and I love the new character. Well, you know, the strategy you went with for the draft was pretty risky. I've got to say because while on one hand you do technically get the people you want, Jeff. The thing is, because they're all alts, they might not get the attention that you'd like them to. Right. I'm but not saying I'm... that it's a bad idea. I'm saying you're you're gambling a little bit, right? Right. But here's <laughs> the thing. So a couple of things. If you if you look at who I got, mm -hmm. I got a really strong early to mid game pick. Mm -hmm. And then when I went with alts, I went with players that I thought would would that the alts would actually fit the Fed better than the main, mm -hmm. and because of who else is in the Fed, I assumed that they would just look and be like, damn, I got to go play that alt because that's so, where I so, want to be. So they would be more engaged because the other people around them is the idea. Right. Well, think that about it. So I let Rude slide, right? Like I knowingly let Rude slide, but I wanted to. I know. I was, I was wounded. I was like right here. Until it, you did saw it. Did it mean nothing to you, Jeff? I took homicide because I love homie. I know you do. I know you're down with homie. Not many people are, but you like him Love a lot. He's, he's great. And I, so a lot of people play the young character who's uncertain. So that's how I started Alan. Mm -hmm. Some people play the young character who's brash and bold. So that's how Tony Ropes got started. Mm -hmm. But you played homie as the young heel who wants to be brash, but is totally insecure. And it was yeah. brilliant. Yeah, Love yeah. The little part of that, what made it work was, was the timing right after Jason Storm had won the, no, no, you had won the King of Wrestling and Jason Storm had died. And so uh -huh. Homicide is a new guy. He just saw this big match. This person literally died in a cage match. His first match was a cage match. So I'd like, he might think he's out over his head, right? You know, like, uh, it and the reality uh, system, people fucking die doing this. So, yeah. you know, it just made sense at the time. And then I kind of ran with it from there. I, I'll never forget, I can't remember the post, all the details, but I remember you had him wet himself. In a yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. And it was so good, like so willing to just throw your own character under the bus. And I remember reading it and thinking, we've seen Rude and he's great and he gets heat and angles and big story ties and everybody's <laughs> got some history and, and we know people are going to want to fight about like all kinds of things Rude. Mm -hmm. But I looked at my Fed and I saw all these veterans and these guys that are big names, and these real players. And I thought, who's going to be our young guy? Who's going to be our guy trying to figure out where he fits, how he lines up in it? And to me, right from the get-go, as I planned my draft, I pegged Homicide over Rude because mm -hmm. of where he would fit in that Fed. Yeah, I, I tried to take my own little unique approach on the young guy sort of thing. I wanted to make him cheesy, which is why he was super into the hip-hop stuff because, like, he it. thinks he's cool. Right. But he's actually like a huge dork, you know? Yeah. Like even with this whole King of Abs thing, it's just abs. It's not that impressive, but he acts like it is, oh, yeah. you know? And it's... I felt like that worked with like a young, naive guy that just thinks he's bigger than he is. But then he once he's actually in the shit, he starts losing it, right? Right. You know, that's wasn't, uh, idea. wasn't his original, I, I don't know if you changed it or not. Wasn't his original avatar Buff Bagwell? It was originally Buff Bagwell because that's who I saw in my head originally. Just because, you know, he had Buff Bagwell had the whole, I'm buff and I'm the stuff type thing. And so I wanted this guy to be really more physical because Rude's not very, like, super buff. He's kind of a short lucha type style guy. Right. And so I wanted to try playing like a power character, you know, a power wrestler. And so, you know, I remember Buff Bagwell being pretty awesome back in his day before the, the next stuff, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it just seemed like it fit pretty well, like the, the personality, what have you. That's, that's terrific. I'm... I, like I really liked it. I think I do think he's an underappreciated character. 
Now, he's not your only character that people don't know. Like people really look at you and they talk about rude. But yeah. you have other characters, so I do. Like, I do. Run us through some of the other ones. You want to talk about the Sea Slam ones the, or the Rasa ones? Because the Sea Slam ones, there's more than I could even begin to. In fact, if Philly Fats is in the chat, he might remember one of my very first characters. His name was Jordan Zombie. Look, it was the 90s. Rob was Rob Zombie was a big deal then. And he and I, when he was Mr. Whipple, were like a little triad with me, him, and you know him as Basket Case, but I knew him as Penance back then. Okay. And they actually kind of it was interesting because I came in and did the, like the shit talk and heal thing. And like, they are the ones going to show up to defend their fed. And mm -hmm. then I messaged them and they're like, what if y'all do, what if we just like turned on the fed and all three of us just feed it with everyone. And that's what we ended up doing. It was really cool. There was even people on, cause I can't remember the name of the indie fats might know, but the indie had its own OOC board and people were sitting there calling us the Maki players and talking about how toxic we were to the fed. Cause everything was about us. And I'm like, well, this is working. And, also, you know, he, Whipple, he taught me a lot, and I learned a lot from him. So, you know, I'm sure he, he probably doesn't remember any of this shit, but it meant a lot to me. To talk. I, uh, I uh, Oh, I am in that feedback loop for me now, Jordan. Um, uh, how about now? Is it I need to get closer? Or? Uh, let me see. Yeah, it does seem to be a little better. That's... Okay, let me scoot it up a bit. All right. Better? Yeah. Um, so, but um, beyond that, uh, in... CWA specifically, one of my favorites I ran was Nigel Crowley. I don't know who made the fart noise when Maverick mentioned Nigel, but I have such an amusing anecdote about that, okay? <clears throat> so when Nigel, I first came up with him, I wanted to be the purest good guy that ever gooded, right? Just to see if I could do it, because I was so used to being the re reprehensible douchebag all the time, right? Right. So I made Nigel intentionally kind of cornbread at first because he's so good he's like superman you know and uh sean justice was his first big feud right and we had a couple matches and i ended up winning them and then one day maverick messages me and he goes i can't believe it jordan I'm like what's wrong and he goes i've beaten alan scott i've beaten john root but i can't fucking beat nigel crowley and i'm like oh man that fucking sucks he's like yeah i don't know what's going like he's complaining about the judges and i'm 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 low-key cackling the whole time because it's me you know, <laughs> so you're saying <laughs> Mav had some butt hurt? I mean, a little bit. I look, Maverick is is a really great dude. He's he's actually been pretty important in how Rude became what he was. You know, like because I first made Rude way. Um, you'll have to probably correct me on the year, but this was when Maverick had taken over the CDB as a regional, and mm -hmm. it had the Blood Brothers, Acid Ed, Max. Um, this was a long, long, like like oh five, oh six, something like that, right? Eric had told me about all these people coming back, and he said, Jordan, it's a really good fed. You should try it out. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I have a problem with activity in the past. I might just lose interest again because that was a huge deal for me. I was one of those guys that would show up for a bit, get bored, and just leave, right? But eventually, I came up with the idea for Rude, and that, and, and the idea kind of came from uh, there's this guy in WWE called Johnny Nitro. Are you familiar with him? He had, like, the really hot, you know, valet, and he had the big gaudy furry coat and shit like that and i'm watching this dude like be like this cocky douchebag whatever i'm like what if i did that but edgy right and i'm like man you can put anything behind johnny and it'll probably sound cool so i'm like johnny rude and i made him as edgy and as offensive and mean as possible and it worked out so you know but yeah i originally got my first kind of formation with mav in cdba and later when he took over the ngbw and also lars uh, helped me out by recruiting me into the Blood Brothers. You helped me out by letting me retire Joe Power. Like, it was a team effort, you know? You got uh, you got over on that whole family. I gave you that Joe Power story where I was like, I'm, I'm not going to use him right now. Why don't you put him down? So you put him down. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I was looking for, a, like, a real change, and I decided for the first time, because apparently I have no tolerance for keeping things that way, I was like, hey, I'm going to kill Ed. So do you want the match where it's going to happen? Like, Yeah, yeah, we did that too. And I'm like, I mean, I can keep retiring your characters if you want me to. I'll just soak up the clout, right? right. You know, I went back and watched, reread that match um, before the reboot started because I was feeling all like nostalgic and shit. And it still holds up pretty well, I find, you know. Yeah. I remember during that match, you messaged me because I took one of your ideas. Like you, you and I had one of those like 
serendipitous. We thought of the same thing at the same time, but we didn't communicate it. And you mentioned me saying that I'd stolen the thing you thought about with Dead Star betraying Rude. And right. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like it, it, it worked. <laughs> man, Dead Star has never been cooler than that rewrite. I'm just saying. We <laughs> we were we were the best of his life. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because otherwise, he's largely unremarkable. Beyond, but uh, to get back to the question, Beyond Nigel also ran Trauma for a bit, which is my one female character in FedEx. Um, I wanted to like do super villain shit with and also kind of play with narrative a bit and I know a lot of people didn't like it but it kind of like flexed my skills as a writer to try and do something a little bit different but uh I mean she she won the crazy eight so you know both Alan and genocide have to hold that you know um <laughs> I mean it's, am, I, am I wrong though and the best part about that was that I went in there wanting homicide to win and then halfway through, she just became godlike on the sim. So I just switched gears and went all in on trauma. And so they had to do the job to this like little Daphne look like it was great. It was so bad. <laughs> and not bad in a good way, as Federation X has recently learned. Is but it bad in the bad way? It was bad in the bad way. Oh, wow. That's right. Man, I, I saw oh. a little bit about bad. That was, uh, it's interesting what you guys are doing. Yeah, well, it's funny because it probably took, so I put the post up this morning, I'll bet you it took less than five minutes before the first person responded and said, so the fourth man is rude, right? He's on the podcast tonight. The fourth man has to be rude. And since then, I heard from six or seven other people going, so it's rude, right? And I said, I, I didn't find out about you doing this until we had a little pre-show chit chat when we were, you know, back end testing everything. So it's news to me. I just think it's pretty cool, you know. Um, the other thing I saw that I really liked was Naked Man having the um, fake Naked Man. I was trying to get ready to buy Rassle Bucks. That shit's fucking hysterical. I love it. I think it's great. Naked um, has done some very crazy things in his time back with us. Mm -hmm. Not the least of which is if, if you actually get deep into the whole story and, and I don't do that, like it's a rabbit hole you never come out of. Um, <laughs> there was time travel, multiple mm -hmm. versions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a future self, bringing back Russell Bucks and French Canada mm -hmm. led by uh, Le Jeff and Ice Hog rebelling mm -hmm. against the rest of Australia. I did see some of that. And some of the characters he used, like Morgan the Fake, he had used in like past stuff that I remembered because I've been, you know, Naked Man Stan since the slam, although he probably doesn't remember that. Though I do have an amusing sort of anecdote about Naked Man and Rassel, if you want me to share it. Yeah. Um, so when I was in the UC with Psycho Manus, for whatever reason, Naked Man had decided to become the Fed reporter. I don't think he was appointed. I think he just decided just to do it himself, you know? Because you know how like any wrestler could be the reporter as long as you wanted yeah. to do the work, right? So he'd do these long form essay, like once a week recaps of every single thing in very meticulous detail of what was going on in UC, right? But he hated how it was playing Psycho Manus. He hated so much that I would have a whole section dedicated to me each week about how bad my writing was. And this was all out of character. This wasn't in character. Not only how bad my writing was, but how the fact that I would do multiple posts in succession would fuck up timelines. And like, he would just go like merciless, man. He would like fucking hold me to the coals, right? And it got so bad one time that I actually messaged him and I'm like, what's going on, man? Do you have like some kind of problem? Am I, am I pissing you off? Like, I don't get where this is coming from. And I don't remember what happened after that, but oh man, that was a rough time for me. That was, uh, I'm like, man, maybe I should just stop posting. Eric was like, no, Jordan, it's fine. I'm like, but man, you you would make it saying like I don't know, man. Maybe maybe it's time to stop. <laughs> Listen, I, I, in the chat, he probably he might remember this. Your your brother takes more crap, and the fact that he's still playing, like if he can survive, anybody can survive. Absolutely, you know. I know Mav had a little shout out to Eric during the uh, the important people draft. Yep. And I wanted to add to that. And I don't think a lot of people know that he's Eric has done a lot of building too in the games. 
because he was a member of the EC at least twice that I remember for sure. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. run feds, but he was it was like a floating position, but he still had to run the fed sure. until they found mm-hmm. someone, right? And then on the power base, he's been on there at least twice that I'm aware of. And he like helped do events. He was a player rep. You know, like he's he's done a lot of behind the scenes uh, building and stuff too, not just as a player. And I don't think that gets acknowledged enough. You know. Oh, so, you're 100 yeah. percent right. Um, he and and one of the things I think so he takes a lot of crap for spelling and grammar, right? Like he takes a lot of crap for it. But what gets missed is he always moves the angle forward. Mm-hmm. He always knows what the psychology of the match should be, and he writes to it. Yeah. And so if, yeah. if he's if he should be under, he's under. If he should be over, he's over. If he should be weak, he's weak. If he should be strong, he's strong. I remember one time this was back in the slam during the in the CWFE. I don't know if you remember that or not. When they had the two elites, CCW yeah. and Spiffy. Well, he and he and I were in the CWFE, and he had won their like highest belt, and he actually repeated himself losing that match because it was better for the story. So he gave up being a title holder just to make the story better. And I don't think a lot of people, not even myself, I'm being perfectly honest, would do that, you know? So I think it's something that people should think about more. I don't know. I totally agree. Now, having said that, mm-hmm. your brother's kind of a little chippy on the Discord. He's not shy about bringing heat on himself by throwing shade at other people. So I mean, he needs to clap back. <laughs> right, right. He's gotten comfortable with the clap, let me tell you. That, that, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Assuming they can decipher it. Sometimes we have to get him to clarify so we know who he's making fun of, but, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, you could always assume it's like a broad blanket, you know, slam to every, everyone. Sometimes it is. But that's kind of more my shtick than his, just to say. Which, man, let me tell you, when I was first starting out with Rude, there were like a lot of unofficial rules of running an E-Fed character that people used to follow. Like, you know, you only feud with one person at a time, you only run one ring at a time. And I thought to myself, what if I just feuded with everyone? And I'm like, wait, literally everyone? I'm like, yeah, just, well, and then I'm thinking, well, what if they have a stable? Well, fuck them. We'll just feud with the whole stable. I don't give a fuck. And then, and that just helped me really understand who Rude was by just like basically telling everyone to fuck off, you know? And so now naturally that got to points where like a whole stable would beat him down and I'd have to shelve him while he recovered because I'd oversell shit. But like, well, as soon as he came back, like fucking everybody hated him and it, that's how I kept getting higher on the cards, and I think that worked out, you know? Of course it worked out. <laughs> it's a great way to do it. I love it. Just make everyone mad at you? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of making everybody mad at you, one of the great joys of knowing you would be on is that I knew you would not shy away from throwing some shade at some people. So, yeah. who made the worst picks in the draft? I know you've looked at it. Well, I got to say, I wasn't... so. I wasn't surprised, but I was a little disappointed at the um, drama mama fed that Mav created. You know, I mean, look, okay, I know that I'm sure it's light it up. I know it's sure at some point in his time he played a very different game than he does now, but you know, as you become an old man, your tastes change. You like a certain thing, and he likes a certain thing now, and the thing he likes is the oxygen network. So, you know, uh, he likes the Twitter lesbians, and that's cool. You know, that's all right. That's to each his own, right? You know, that's and and Mav 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 knows what I'm about, so yeah, he's not surprised with this. Um, Lars and you, you guys had 100 solid picks. Like, I can't argue with any of them. Lars picked me a little lower than I would have liked, but I can't argue with some of the people you picked because I mean, one of them was Digsy, and I mean, you can't argue with Bruce was awesome. Right. My only right. regret was I only got to play with them for a very short amount of time. When he had done that brief comeback before the King of the Street fight, do you remember that? Yeah, I did. We had some, some we were start build, starting to build a pretty good feud, but then his work got, I think it was his job caught up with him and he couldn't keep going. But uh, yeah, he, yeah, he was he really was, nice uh, to work with him when I could. He really was I excellent. I, I wish was, I could have done it longer, you know? Yeah. I, I think that was one of the great fortunes of me. Like my first, so my second Fed as a commissioner was a national in C Slam. Mm-hmm. And he was my first uh, call up. Mm-hmm. My very, I took one look, read their boards, and was like, "That's the guy." Yeah, I mean, he told me a story about how he basically was like egging you on as a commissioner, or something to that effect. Yeah. I don't know the full details, but he had told it in character during our feud to make a point to Rude, which I really liked. 
thought it was great. You, like I said, you remember the details of the story better than I do, but yeah. it was really good how he worked that in. Well, and it's neat because mm -hmm. if you look now, like obviously there's a lot of love for Bruce, especially since he passed. Um, mm -hmm. But of was there. Uh, our father was there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think. There were some other guys that were there at that time. Soothsayer, who's not really playing, but you know, has been around. I certainly still stay in touch with Matt, was there. Some of those guys were like in that fed when that went down. And and mm -hmm. so uh, it's kind of neat for me to look and go, hey, look at the love Bruce got. And then look at all the guys that are still around who are like, oh yeah, that he was the guy. Mm -hmm. He right? was, he definitely was. Like I said, I wish I could have played with him longer, but it is what it is. You know, I'm glad I got to have a couple matches with him. So, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page as you about that, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I was fortunate to, to get to play with them. I was fortunate that we were friends personally and that we, yeah. you know, like I got to stay up on his, uh, his world poker tour playing. Yeah, you told me he was a pro poker player, right? Yeah. Like, didn't he have a championships and shit? If I'm yeah, he had, a couple, he had a couple of smaller championships which won him into. So when he won in, they mm -hmm. would give him tickets. So they gave him two tickets mm -hmm. uh, and their airfare and accommodations to go play in the world poker tour competition in Monaco. And he took his father. Wow, so, that's like, great. Like, that's such, it was like one of those great moments. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not easy doing that. Like, the poker's a hard game to be a pro at, you know? Because right. there's like the, obviously the card counting on it, and there's the psychological stuff. And like, for him to be able to do it, he must have been really great, you know? He really was. And, and, and it was interesting. Like, I'd get these updates at weird hours. I'd get texts on my phone going, pocket fucking aces that's all it would say and i'm like oh, i guess he's out <laughs> well you know that's how you know that someone's your best when they can text you any time of day and you're not mad about it right not, not at all you know because you're, you're hearing from it doesn't matter what's going on I, right i get that a lot yeah um, i remember oh hey surprise i invited a chucklehead oh god well he's not going to talk anyway whatever it's fine so <laughs> back to the draft um those are the three main hot takes i had there was a fourth guy that drafted, but I don't really remember him very well, so I can, we can ignore him. Miller, mute the thing in the background. What's going on? How's it going, Miller? You he still can't answer. He's, gotta un sheet? he's got to unmute because I muted him. All right. <laughs> I see he's still rocking pedo chic, though. Unmute yourself, Miller. Yeah. See, look, he shows up and dead air already started happening. That's right. We were having a great conversation, and then all of a sudden he shows up and then silence. There we go. That's what I do. Hey. I'm the ruiner. Hey, so uh, I asked Rude to give us a little reality check on the uh, on the draft, and he started by throwing some serious shade at the Fed filled with Twitter lesbians. <laughs> I saw that. Hockey <laughs> <Mafia> network. <laughs> What we like to see waste no time <laughs> leave no heat unthrown <laughs> well, you know well, i gotta, I gotta, I gotta get all that heat in so that's gold cool. hey so give us some more uh who who got picked that shouldn't have been picked at all um well there's this guy genocide that i think is vastly overrated you know like he had this one gimmick with the fibias that was okay I mean, it was pretty over <laughs> It, look, it was very over, but the thing is, it kind of got to the point where you like you beat the horse and it's already dead, and, but then you just keep beating it. That's sort of that, that's that's just when the angle starts to get good. Oh, really, Jordan? That's you know by it. now, you have to beat it all the way through it from from not really caught on to really good to dead. Why is he still doing it to back to good? But haven't you all seen the meme where they're like, "Stop it! He's already dead." <laughs> that's exactly what it was, you know. Like it's it's already done, you know. I'm surprised Reverend Future wasn't picked higher. He should have been a lot higher, in my opinion. So, like, so the, natural, the natural fit for me was to pick Rev earlier, but I did the same thing when I looked at the Fed. Mm -hmm. He played uh, Masked Villain as a younger character, a younger mm -hmm. heel trying to find his heel like footing. And mm -hmm. I liked that for what we were going to do with the Fed. Right. So I intentionally didn't. So that meant, you know, Tim had him much later to pick up. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I was thinking, like, if I were in that situation, you know, an important person doing the draft instead of whoever that fourth guy was, um, I would have either had for my first two picks, because, like, in my opinion, you need a good face to build the Fed around. I would have picked Rev or Hank Hooligan. 
person early early yeah huh? early yeah honestly i, I I'm, str I'm strong in that conviction you know i know frank had some hit and miss activity wise but when he was on in my opinion he was really on you know very we, strong writer he could do a lot we certainly thought he was good mm -hmm. good good as opposed to bad i hear bad is the new good is it but it's does australia but does australia like bad i doubt it but America oh, yeah. loves it. Well, America is a heel, you know, country. So. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. Lord. So, but that was just my general impressions of the, the draft. But I do have a list of people I would put in the King of Wrestling if we want to talk oh, about Oh, we want to hear this. So we drafted and I said to Rude, hey, when you come on, you look at each fad and you take the four you think belong in the FXF fantasy king of wrestling first tournament. And you tell us who's in, you tell us what the matchups are, and you tell us who wins. So, walk so us. It, was, it was a really difficult situation. I had to really sit and deliberate on this because each fed, even, you know, the one by that guy nobody knows, had some good people in it. You know, obviously you and Lars, in my opinion, were the strongest of the four. But each roster, you'd argue, a case are being really stacked, right? Col Col Colt has already confirmed that I won. It's okay. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we don't need to argue about it, Colt. Unbiased. <laughs> well, it's like I told you. When it came down to it, I felt like you and Mars would be the ones competing more than, you know, the other two. I think Matt would just be happy being in his oxygen bubble, you know? He's already responded to your heat and said, I like my fed thumbs up. So. You're not going to get Nigel in it, so that's great. You know, yeah. that's... I still want to know who fucking... A full oh. Chucklehead reunion? Uh oh This is an OG podcaster, and you look at this. Chuckles. Hey, have we yes. started clicking yet? There we go. Now it's a, now it's like the old days. Man, you know? so wait. We this, got, we got this click and podcast number two, right? Yeah, yeah, there we go. That works. Yeah, for number two. Right, right. Episode. Whatever happened to that one episode that went completely missing? Do y'all even... Podcast 10. Podcast 10 is the best podcast we ever did. It is. It is. Your brother, your brother's still waiting for it to load. <laughs> oh gosh, he's 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 trying to find the link, right? <laughs> this Eric, is just like old times here. Eric, if you're still trying to like download it, you want to open up your JavaScript, you know? <laughs> it's on GeoCities. I was just gonna say you gotta get it from the GeoCity site. That's the only place it loads from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I have the link. If you still have an ICQ number, I can send it to you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So good. Hey, so, uh, Bryce, we were just about to hear Jordan's take on, based on the feds who were drafted, who he would put from those feds in a King of Wrestling tournament. Riveting. Dead air, of course. Keep consistent, please. <laughs> All right, so like I said, I put a lot of thought into this, so I'm ready to uh, present my choices to all of y'all. For CWA, I chose Angelica, Kitty Hawk, Eve Riley, and Faith. Because tits. I'm, I got to pick the strongest people, okay? The lesbian Twitter bracket. So for show, I I'll recruit them. So for show, I picked Amp, Lionel, Matt McDervish, and Magnificent. For good, I picked Homicide, Samite, Saber, and Max Villain. And for CCW, I picked Johnny Rude, Acid Ed, Omega, and Virtue Knight. Because I had to pick the elites. Okay, this is the king of wrestling. You know? So, so those are the four I picked for each fed. Just to start off with. I have like a little pairing set up, but I wanted you guys to get your initial takes on these picks. All right, I so, the so let's go into 10 minutes on each pick <laughs> to just really get everybody to pass out and die. I mean, I would have passed it just by seeing you, Price. <laughs> I miss you. You well, look like a real man now almost. <laughs> well, you know, you, you helped me get through puberty. What can I say? Well, so, but the first round, Kitty hmm? is round one, but she quits because the judge wasn't lopsided enough. So we whoever that is gets around right into round three. Well, we haven't gotten there yet. Just chill out, pedo chic. All right. So That's Angelica. Hmm? 
That's his game. I mean, but he looks more put together. Like, I would never suspect him. You, however, I wouldn't let you near any of the parks. I mean, Jesus Christ, you look like you're homeless. Anyway. You look like the homeless version of me. What are you talking about? But I got more up here, sir. <laughs> I got more down there. It's more than a thumbs up. <laughs> I don't know about that. I've heard otherwise. Oh. But anyway. So the hey, first match is Angelica but, uh, versus Acid Ed. And I thought a lot about it. And there's just no way Angelica takes it in a complete sweep. All right. Like, Ed, he's... He just isn't what he used to be. You know, he died. He came back. He's just, you can tell he's hard not in the game anymore. So Angelica, she's she's got that straight up. Okay. Straight so up. just to be clear, you're saying in round one of the King of Wrestling, Angelica beats Acid Ed. Correct. All right. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Landslide. Yeah, absolutely. Not even close. Not even. It's a total mop. Speaking of total mops, with Kitty Hawk and Matt McDervish, I have Kitty Hawk. But unfortunately, the real loser of the match is everybody has to read it because it's simply <laughs> the walls of text. You know, it's it's novel upon novel. We're all gonna fall asleep watching the match. Okay, I'm just being honest. Then I have Lionel versus Eve Riley, and I mean it's not even a question, Eve Riley, just because I think once he realizes he is in a match with Eve, he just he'll just walk away. You know. He'll just be done. He couldn't handle all that drama, you know? Then I have Homicide and some guy named Magnificent. Have you all ever heard of him? I don't even know who he is. No. no. Fagnificant. No? Magnific. What is that? Fag oh, well, fair Magnificent. Enough. That's what we, mm -hmm. we called him. I think, oh. I think if your phone is from England, it's Magnificustomer. <laughs> Magnificustomer. Well, because I didn't know he is, I obviously assumed he would do the job to Homicide. I mean, come on, it's homicide. You know? What can you do? Then I have Samite versus Omega, and because I can't fucking stay in Samite at all, I don't know why Jeff thinks he's funny. I'll never understand it. I have Omega over him. Then I have Faith versus Amp, and that's another one of those matches where everybody loses. Because, like, for one thing, you'd have to gamble whether an Amp would show up. And then Faith, you have to decipher between the accent and the typos, right? You know, that's one of those matches where the person reading it really loses. That might and be your most accurate match description so far. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad. I, like I told you, I put a lot of thought into this. This sounds a lot like what it's like when Price judges matches. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's amazing. And if by judge you mean flip a coin or throw right. for whoever yeah, I got more. Because <laughs> we know Price doesn't read. Barely. I pay I'm people like, to read for me. Unless you're on the toilet, then you have no choice. Oh, okay. the, just for the record, the toilet is, in fact, five feet away from me, and mm -hmm. we might have a visit. Gotcha, gotcha. Because I know that's how you uh, had your big King of Wrestling run, is you had to go to the bathroom a lot, you know? Well, you read Aaron Action for a few days, and you see where that gets you. That that might make you a bit irregular, you know? All those <laughs> iffy wheels, you know? Ugh. So then after that, we have Johnny Rude versus Masked Villain, and I mean, obviously it's Rude, right? Not even a question. Then we have Saber versus Virtue Knight, and that's another one where who, who gives a shit? It's Saber. I'm actually surprised that Mav was upset someone took him because when I heard Saber, I'm like, and? Like, it just seemed like such a vanilla pick to me. I don't know. And then in the next round, it's Angelica versus Kitty. Hey, Hall. can I just pause this, right? Give me a second. Oh, yeah. thank God. I think it's important we acknowledge this. I heard that, Price. Um, okay. Slick. <laughs> The fact that you've been able to goad somebody on the live stream into actually objecting to the four that you picked and putting more a more valuable four forward means you win. How do you I overlook mean, so and so? I mean, I don't know whoever said that, but they're clearly a fucking idiot, so we can ignore them. Love it, rude. All right, round two. Angelica versus Kitty Hawk. Now this one is interesting because Being into the mic. Sorry, this one is uh, Angelica versus Kitty Hawk. Now, this one is interesting because in the previous match, Kitty won, but she didn't feel like she won hard enough. And so she quits the second round and Angelica moves on. She gets a bye. I know? knew that was going to happen. I called Saw it. that coming. So Before far, Kitty Angelica's quit had. After you win. So far, Angelica's had the easiest path to victory. You know, we got to keep an eye on her. She's a dark horse, right? First round bye, acid, right? Yeah. Last yeah, basically. Kitty. <laughs> 
And then we uh, have Eve Riley versus Homicide. And to be honest, Homicide doesn't wrestle women. So, I mean, she's going to lose because no way can someone as skinny as her beat up Buff Bagwell, right? Right. Does anybody believe that? That a supermodel could body slam him? I don't. I know Alan doesn't. Yeah. A lot of people on Twitter from what I hear. Uh, that, that's where the Twitter lesbians come from? Oh, Excess knows all mind. about them. <laughs> Excess and I, my I may not have had the best of days with them. Wait, I had wait, some wait, great wait, days wait. and some horrible days. I, I don't Excess know about almost this got canceled. <laughs> on, I don't know about this lore. I need some info on this. I, I apparently came off as quote-unquote rapey, which is pretty shocking. I mean, that's pretty all brand. But it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't even bad. It was this person slash... I never even saw him being raped. So so this this young lady who resembled Rocky Dennis, because I found her a real picture, um, claimed that I was tweeting at her without permission or... Without no consent. Without no consent. consent. Yes, consent. So, therefore, I was a horrible person. I mean, there's many other Wait, reasons I'm a horrible person. But how do you get someone's consent to tag him in a tweet? It's a whole different world out there, dude. It's Twitter is a hellscape. It doesn't and then it. she got all yeah. 10 of her alt accounts to rage. Yes. Are you like fucking serious? Fake yeah. rage. It was hysterical. And I just... This, this is real? This happened? Anymore. Oh, yeah. This yes. is a real thing. Uh, you got white heat from one person and her 10 personalities? And all their little yeah. friends, too. And I want to say, like, 48 hours later, because we were talking about it, somebody was on giving her white heat about the fact that she has 10 personalities that she uses to argue all her points. You know, I know I, I brought the term to y'all, but I have to bow to the master of white heat right now, Johnny XS, because that's that's amazing. That's pretty special. I think it was two weeks in a row I had some. First week was with her, mm-hmm. and then the next week was something else, which I don't remember. <laughs> And that's when you I'm had, just, you had a girl um, that you caught on with you for a while, didn't you? Yeah, there was one that almost came to FedEx. Is that the one that showed up, created an account, looked around, and was like, I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't know because I didn't check the boards really. Wait, are these the people that the commissioner writes the stuff for them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff told me about that, and I thought it was a weird concept, but not necessarily a bad one depending on the execution, but... I don't know, man. Since then, Jeff's told me they're kind of like bitch babies. Yeah, you can't use them in your your role play. You can only write your own person. Like you so can't the, swing a chair and hit them. Where's the story come from? Yourself. It's you written on the yourself. cards <laughs> by the commission and the match writers. That sounds ass backwards. I don't know. I, I could oh, see okay. us if we were playing that way. We could do a great Fed, you know. Yeah. We have we have good comedy match writers, good hardcore match writers. Mm-hmm. And the thing they really have is to make that big card an event thing that everybody tunes in and like reads at the same time. Mm-hmm. We don't have that. It's three day long thing. But right, I'm not staying there. I like ours better. But me too. That's why we do it. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So, last I left off was Homicide and Eve Riley, right? Yes. Okay. So, after that, I had Faith versus Omega. And I'll be honest with you. I know that you, Jeff, like Faith. I've never liked Faith. I've never thought she was <laughs> one of Eric's better characters. Hey, like, something about her. She's like one of those, like, 1990s edge lord, you know, characters with like a British accent that's not even that I don't know I don't like her and solely for that reason Omega beats her just because I like Mega slightly better got it you know so total fair judgment here you know that's all I hear the most unbiased yeah so in the last round we have Angelica versus Homicide well the semifinals I guess and then Johnny Rube versus Omega and honestly, I've beaten Omega so many times that, like, obviously I'd beat him again. It's not that hard. You just got to show up, right? You know? Take drink, like, have a cup free. of coffee, and you're good to go. You're what? saying Omega's free. Oh, you call yeah, Omega man. free. <laughs> Listen, man, I claim him wow. on my taxes. He's one of my children. Like, he's one so of my Does that mean that Carnage is that much better if he's been carrying Omega around the whole time? I mean, better, but that's not a huge, 
you know, are we underrating the Carnage then, guys? Was that? Are we underrating Carnage? Like, I think we are because he has to carry all that weight on his back. You know, is Carnage like a buy one get one free? But is that really a free one you want, or one you're just stuck with? Some some bonus prizes aren't worth having. You know, that's how they get you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Those buy one get one free deals. And then we have Angelica versus Homicide, and unfortunately, Angelica, even though she's having the run of her life, she loses to Activity, and Homicide gets a buy. And so the best grand finals that King of Wrestling ever has is Johnny Root versus Homicide. You're welcome. Who wins? Everyone Nobody. reading it. <laughs> I heard a comp opposing answers there. <laughs> Who's opposing? So, because they're wrong, whoever they are. Well, I, I assume the chuckleheads oppose you because that's Listen, their move. But here's is the thing: it? who would know better than the guy that made the event? They don't know shit about that. They're 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 babies. They you have to speak things slowly to them. I mean, I've won one, so I don't know. Yeah, that was like a fifty percent win, though, right? It's more than a zero percent win. <sighs> it's more than an adequate win. You knew it was coming, right? Like obviously, obviously. But I'm I'm not sure if it was Miller X as one of y'all brought y'all significant other on a podcast. And that turned on No Jeff, Titus. That was Titus. Ah oh, man. I Titus missed this one. Right. I don't I don't Do you not don't. know that we have Titus's wife on record calling him adequate? Had some no, I didn't know that. He I was trying to too. convince us that she would never say that about him, and then she's uh, <laughs> we got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I miss Titus. I wish he'd come back sometime. Mine just walks through the room and calls us fags. Yeah. Just doing that <laughs> faggy ass faggot podcast. <laughs> uh, gold. But yeah, wh wherever you are, Titus, I hope you come back and, and rejoin the Fed and, and play with everyone because you're definitely missed. Hey, so, Rude, I got to ask. Yeah. Karen Crow says that for him, you're free. I mean, that's just not true because he's never beaten me. Are you sure? Positive. So you're saying Kieran Crow is lying. Obviously, he's a commie. You can't do much with commies. Commie? <laughs> he lives in that, that communist hellhole, Australia. No, no. No, that's Canada's Australia. What is? What do you call actual Australia? Australia? Yeah, that's where he lives. Yeah, so they're all full of commies, so we can't trust them. Gotcha. If he had his way, everybody would be the X Factor champion. So, uh, I gotta ask because it okay. wouldn't be the White Heat podcast if I didn't ask about it. So, wait, is that what today, it's called? When we announced that you were going to be on, mm -hmm. Max Entropy said, "Well, why the fuck would anybody watch that?" <laughs> and I'm super interested because I think you could probably explain it to us better than anybody else. Why does Max hate you so much? I think he's just mad that I did his gimmick better than he ever could. You know? I mean, you got to figure, he was used to being the Toki Edge boy of internet wrestling, and then I showed up along and actually brought some, you know, actual talent to the Edge Lord role, and he just never been able to cope about it, you know? Plus, unlike him, I actually showed up to the events I made. You know? So there's that, too. <laughs> Throw in heat. I love it. He just Fantastic. needs to take a pill and deliver some mail. Also... I mean, while we're talking about people who want to throw heat, uh, mm -hmm. I'm led to understand that in the normal live streams where you are a guest, mm -hmm. there may or may not be some heat thrown by you at Tony Robes. Who? Tony Robes? I have no idea who that is. Wait, you mean Brad Rhodes? Don't you're confused. Brad Rhodes? No. You're talking Brad about Rhodes. the Wiccan, right? The Wiccan's back? The fat dude? Is he the still Wiccan? fat? Well, he's he not got, if he's watching this. <laughs> he got semi, semi fat. Oh, okay. I actually heard the podcast he was on when he was just him and Jeff. He actually gave a pretty good interview, and then y'all two showed up and fucked with him way too hard. Like you no, guys. That was me and that was me and Betty. <laughs> yeah, I was, oh, that was you. I, was there, unfortunately. I knew that. I knew one of you. Yeah, I'm like y'all are pretty merciless to that poor guy. Man. I think me and Access just got on and talked about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just shit. It was just a, so. So I've given credit a few times when you haven't been on. Uh, now we have the original cast on. 
Mm -hmm. One, were we responsible for killing the game back then? And two, are we agreed that the podcast has played a big role in helping rebuild the game because that was Eric's idea? Or sorry, that was Jordan's idea. Damn, I'm trying to give Eric my fucking dues. Yeah. What the fuck? Man. No, Maybe. anyway. Yeah, um, I mean, I think the podcast engagement is part of the reason why people are tuning back in because it's a whole other element to the game, right? Like, you can come on one of these shows and be your character and talk shit or, you know, you can give honest, sincere hot takes like I've been doing all night. You know, it's, it's good stuff. I think it's important, you know? I think uh, last time... We didn't balance the douche and the fun and the bullshit with actual content that's helping, like yeah. we're doing now. <laughs> well, I've been a little too much that, uh, uh, white heat last time. Yeah, the original the podcast, podcast were basically Jason was in charge of right the one he did all by himself, the crap cast. The crap cast was awful. There was a lot of clicking, a lot of um, um, click, click, yeah. click, 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 click. It was, it was fucking atrocious almost yeah. as bad as when, that the FedEx, one when almost as bad as when you left fedex 2 gino uh, uh jeff do you remember that i do yeah that was pretty awful too maybe gino shouldn't be in charge of things he should just like come up with things i agree don't give him any responsibility he can't don't encourage him. him he just throws you ideas know? out and it's like what aren't you guys gonna do it because you i just was, give, you know, think give miller and me the real podcast. jason folds <laughs> Do the Empire F podcast. That's right. I think I think you guys did one once, and I think it was it's the one we call the crap cast. I think mostly we just talked about <laughs> Brad Rhodes not being able to say R and Man, y'all are so mean to that guy. He was to giving everybody. Like... <laughs> Who weren't we mean to? I mean and then he came on and strife. got an attitude with Jeff. When he was on it. <laughs> yeah, he was a little bitter with me <laughs> as though I was the one being the asshole to him. Maybe he thought you set it up, right? Like, well, maybe he thought you were like, up. no, but he's saying, like, maybe he thought you were luring him in with the sincere interview until they came in, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't uh, seen when you mentioned Tony Jabroni, I thought you were talking about Jeb Brad Rhodes. So that was my confusion. No, we're talking about Tony that you go on and talk shit about while he's on the dirt sheet. I've never said anything about Tony Rhodes. What are you talking about? Well, I'm just telling you what I hear. I hear there I mean, might be some heat between you guys. Well, then you're well, the people you listen to are fucking liars because I have never said anything like that. Did you almost spit your drink? I did. Wait, I'm Jeff, <laughs> why do I have a feeling Jeff has a recording of these things that he's about to play? <laughs> I don't, but wouldn't that be a great moment? Hold on. Let's listen. <laughs> there, there are some recordings out there of me, but I have only Stan Daniels with his lead hacker skills would know about that. Stan is in the live stream and says this podcast needs 100% more Man Hanyels. Man, Man Hanyels is awesome. What, does he want to join the call? I, I think his wife has told him he's no longer allowed to join calls. <laughs> <laughs> he wakes up in the mornings and the house is a mess. <laughs> that's, a, that's the difference. Stan Stan listens to his wife. Man Hanyels. Yeah. Man beats his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you got your audio fixed, Jason. I'm proud of you. We can actually hear you now. Good job. Turn it back down. We've heard enough. I've evolved. <laughs> You're that guy that shows up on the TV and goes, I'm helping! So, he's the Kansas kid on the Rousseau show? Basically, yeah. But with shoulders. He was unconscious the entire show last time. <laughs> I noticed that. He just, he just left. <laughs> He just sat one thing. The guy that said kinda... anything in 20 minutes, so I might as well just click. <laughs> mm, it was amazing. I'm really trying to set part of low this. standard on that show, and he's not letting me. Yeah. Yeah. That's... We gotta maintain that Gino quality, you know. So Rude, have you have you followed along enough with what's going on in FedEx to talk about whether there are, are in, there's anybody there right now that you would like to like like hey, if I was in, I like, those are people I'd like to play with that I haven't really run something with before? Well, I wouldn't mind playing with Kansas Kid, because I think the last time we tried to play together, we kind of got off on the wrong foot. You know? <laughs> he does that with people. <laughs> uh, you know, I remember I, I was switching characters in the middle of a, at the beginning of a match because I wasn't feeling rude at the time. And he actually had, like, this thing where he was like, fuck you, Jordan, in the post. 
like and I got a little butthurt about that, which was, you know, my bag. I took this shit too personally for a long time. So I wouldn't have another. He's good at it. He's good at it. Oh, yeah, he kind of remind me of like old homeless Jay and things like that, where like taking the pot shots and stuff like that. Or like when Naked Man would do Doctor Abortion, he'd do kind of those same kind of things. It was, it was, it was. Yeah, it was very old school esque. Yeah. So him would be one. Taking it old scabs. <laughs> Another one would probably be obviously Naked Man because I have so much history with the guy and he's fun to you know watch and I wouldn't mind working with him and having a good angle with him again. Um, let me think. Techno, I've never worked with him before. At least I don't remember having ever done that. I could be wrong. He seems like he's, he's pretty all right. So what you're saying is you might have been Techno's forgettable. That's what I, I mean, heard. No, I'm saying, I, look, I've been doing this shit since I was 11. So like... I've forgotten a lot of people, you know, and some people I never bothered to remember, like whoever Maverick Dawson's partner is. So, you know, yeah. Maverick Dawson's a good one. I wouldn't mind role playing with him too. He's all right. You know, Got that I'd probably speak. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you th I noticed there was like an epidemic of cowboy shit going on in the fed there for a minute there. Uh, don't know what that was about. That was kind of like, huh? All right. I think it's still <laughs> ongoing. Is it? It's not anywhere that the bad guys are. Oh, uh, well, I'm guessing Kid started it and it just kind of spread, or? You would be guessing correctly. Uh, that's, what I, that's what I thought, because I started reading his post with uh, one of the Anus sisters, and, um, you know. Which one are you, by the way? Neither one, unfortunately. I wish I would have thought of that. That would have been amazing. But the Tory, just... then? Hmm? The Tory, then? I can't confirm or deny so you know so um, <laughs> I, got, I, I have another question because all four of you are on you're the right people for me to ask this question of today I had to put up with some shit shit I don't want to have to put up with okay and I had to listen once again to conversations uh, about the super secret society of inner circle people wait they're still doing that meme come on so, okay, all of you at one point in time were the new guy. So why don't you just tell them, you know, how much you had to pay and how many people you had to sacrifice in order to get into the, you know, blood ritual of the inner circle. Listen, I'll let you guys in on a secret. Okay, I'll let you guys in on a secret. The whole, you know, Eric can't type thing. How do you think I got in the circle? That's why I can't type, y'all. It's not any kind of problem. He just... I'm like, look, Eric, I'm, I want to be cool and popular with all these internet people. So I'm going to break your hands multiple times over the course of several months. And you're just going to have to live with that. And he's like, you know what, Jordan? That's fine. You're my brother. Break away. And I remember back in C-Slam, he could, he could spell good. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, he made a sacrifice. The <laughs> he was fine. Broke his, his fingers, comments, broken legs. Correctly. Yeah, and, and he's, he's as broken as a link to Podcast 10, you know? He's uh, he was a little upset today when he found out we were having an inner circle meeting and he didn't get an invite. He said, hey, I'm, I'm probably out then. The issue was there were stairs to get in, so we wouldn't be able to get up there. <laughs> yeah. You one of those, like, supervillain stair lifts that's, like, on the side of the stair that kind of goes up and down, you know? That would work, right? I mean... I assume it would. But then again, those things have a habit of like freezing up. So what if you get stuck halfway through? Oh, that would be our fault too, right? The inner circle like scheme. Yeah, it must be. And what no matter what. So it's no joke. I'm we're dealing with it again because every Fed's gotta have assholes. So I thought only the good people came back. I thought so too. So who's yeah. complaining? No, I mean, if you want to name them, we can, that'd be pretty Yeah, great. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Just initials. There's people in the live. <laughs> the initials <laughs> will work. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gino's going to lose his drink. That's perfect. <laughs> that's amazing. You're saying there's people in the live chat? What were they uh, saying? I believe it. So Eric is saying it's Jay-Z. Is that true? Certainly that's one of them. Really? 
And I, I don't feel like that's an issue for Jay-Z. Like, he's a younger player. He's having a frustrating go, go with Tony. They're throwing at each other. But I have zero patience for this inner circle bullshit. I always have had zero patience for it. It's such Didn't a little... we have a whole podcast with LeJeff about this very issue? A cannibal? I'm not being passive aggressive about it. I'm being polite because I'm Canadian, so suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't even remember cannibal. Is he like a worse carnage or something? Well, he's not a good carnage. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Not a bad one either. Just kind of middle of the road? No, listen, he can write, but apparently can also whine and bitch, so... Mm, gotcha. So we're at the Jeff Aris's beef for the I, I, did, part of the podcast, didn't, huh? Didn't some of the draft get get mixed in with the butt hurt too? Oh, I don't draft know. Results? I didn't hear about that. I just listen. I don't care about the other stuff. You can go whine and complain about other stuff, but whining that there's an inner circle is just the stupidest thing in the world. Because they were running that narrative back when, like, we first did the relaunch after the the lottery fiasco, and then it happened again after the King of Wrestling, like. I thought that was just butthurt to wrestle people, right? And people that hated Mav, because for some reason there was this whole cabal of people that really didn't like Maverick and assumed he ran the Fed when he wasn't even involved for years. Right. Years. And they're like, it's Mav and his friends. And I'm like, this dude's running some female that no one gives a shit about. He's right. not running shit. You know? Yeah. What's well, funny is nobody's ever spoken out because anybody that's ever been in the quote inner circle knows how much the inner circle is just constantly bitching at each other and <laughs> can barely Look, agree on anything. All we do is let shit alone talk on how to other. hold the Fed down, you know. All we do is shit talk each other between just the four of us. So I don't see why you'd even want to be a part of this. Do you like a yeah? It's a real shit show. <laughs> The inner circle was me talking Grayson into swerving FedEx and going back to wrestle. That's the inner circle. <laughs> it's about his inner circle as it got. Yeah. Yeah. Chris said to me after after that conversation came up a few weeks ago, he's like, he talked you into it. He didn't, like, he was there, but he wasn't super, like, he got you guys to go there. And then he was like, you know, three posts this week and let you guys do all the work. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a Gino move. That's Here's the idea. idea. You guys do it. It was like a pyramid scheme. I was getting right. from everything you did, you know? At least you admit it now. We can start thinking you're Ponzi. actually a Hall of Famer. I just got to the Hall of Fame on a big heat Ponzi scheme. Gotcha, gotcha, you know. I, I, I get what you're saying, I get what you're saying. So, Jeff, Gino does the Madoff. chat have any uh, questions for us or anything? I haven't seen any come up. I did see Philly Fat say looking at excess makes him feel really good that his daughter's turned 21. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true, though. <laughs> Which is gold. That is so good. Uh, and Mano's asking if we're talking about the incident with the talent. Yes, Mano, that's the incident we're referencing is the talent invasion. I wish I could have been around when that happened. That would have been a blast. That's how y'all met the reigning in blood guy, right? The the yes. Romulus Winters? Hey, yep. so what I happened would, to him? I would Hold on, I got to pause you because I would be remiss. We said if they came on the live stream and they threw actual heat that I would ask. So... Uh, Tony Rhodes would like to know, Johnny Rude, how many cats you fucked today? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Tony Rhodes? I'm still trying to figure that out. Is that like one of your alts, Jeff? It's not one of mine. Oh, then it must be X's because it's, you know, it's pretty low effort, right? And we know X's doesn't like to try. What's that? He doesn't even know what we're talking about. Look at that goofy grid, stupid fuck. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's not paying attention. He you know, really isn't. He really isn't. He really other isn't. stuff going on. You know. So I mean that's that's what how I feel about whoever Tony Jabroni is. So all right. I guess that's the answer he's getting. Mm hmm So zero is the correct answer? Zero, apparently. Apparently. I mean it was a non answer. It wasn't a zero. Yeah, it wasn't committal. <laughs> it was more We're of not kittens. Like, I mean, wait, kittens, this is being broadcast? Kittens are a bit too small, though. That's the thing. Like, you know. Now Mav's piling on. He'd like to know if you would answer the question. I have fucked as many cats as you have Twitter lesbians in your fed, Mav. Uh, One day? So here's an actual... <laughs> that's a non-zero number. <laughs> yeah. That's an infinite number. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Here's a, a legit question in the chat. Mm -hmm. Um... 
uh, Man of War would like to know the genesis of the more emo rude bit and if you wanted to do more with a face turn. Emo rude. I need a little like you more certainly went through a period where Johnny was very introspective. Uh, one wanted to a generous a way to for it. his his past. Right, right, right. So like okay, it was Or I feel on... like you have the superior over Max Enter be the superior character because he just became more and more of a cartoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where I feel like Rude always kind of had this tether back to you know, grounded and see yeah, Max is on Pluto somewhere person. sucking on someone's boner, no one gives a fuck about him. Jumping sharks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jumping him, humping him, whatever he wants to do, you know. Can't judge a man's personal life, just ask excess. Anyway, um, it was after a match had with Storm where revealed that Rude had the um the son, right, Tristan. And I thought to myself, well, you know, I've done like the, the bad guy heel shit. Could I make Rude a face and make it believable? So I, you know, I tried. I don't think it would. There's a lot of stuff I want to do that just didn't happen just because of, like, Jeff and I had some stuff with Joe Power we wanted to do, but then, like, other people came in and kind of broke it up and it didn't quite execute the way I wanted because I didn't have a completely clear vision, but, you know, I wouldn't mind revisiting that sometime. It's Does harder to be traction as a face, too. It's harder to. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot harder to like figure out the lane of what kind of good guy you want to be because by their nature faces are somewhat passive, you know. You can't go out and like punch a guy and start a feud. You have to be the punch, you know. So I mean it's 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 tough transition there, you know. So I found I that when started. we were playing the good guys, everybody was doing stuff to provoke us. I mean, right, a lot. Listen, the good guys provoked a fed of revealed the fed full of heels. I mean, you know, uh, country. And, and honestly, but remember we talked about how the good guys are really hard to feud with if you are an actual like baby face. You know, like Mountain was saying, like he's he's supposed to be the good guy, but everybody's booing him. He didn't know how to like combat that. And he so the Doritos. Only... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so the only thing I think y'all could really do, and I remember when the good guys were taking steam, I was starting to check out, was that you need to just lean into the heel thing and be a worse guy than them. You know what I mean? That's pretty much the best way, in my opinion, you could combat their shtick. To be you know? fair, you know and I were having this conversation. Um, how the hell did Excess end up one of the good guys? I mean, he had the streak. <laughs> was that well, I mean, he, he, it was. he used to have it, and then... And then Gina took it from it before midnight. That was um, pretty douchey. If I cared an ounce about things, that would have been the one time I would have been mad. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I, I and I it was. That's it. why it was the best swerve because nobody <laughs> got swerved. You know, nobody. Yeah. You know, like because he was running that so well leading up to that end of that month, and that's when out of nowhere. Gito just takes it from him. It was probably the best ex angle access ever had. <laughs> yeah, we've got more questions coming in for uh, for Rude. So okay. again, with Man of War. So mm -hmm. good question. Did you ever want to be a Twitter lesbian? And if so, what would the name be? And which of Eric's characters would you be better than? And which characters would you be worse than? <laughs> what the fuck, guys? Like. <laughs> a good question uh unfortunately i never felt that driving urge to be a twitter lesbian but if i did i would obviously be better than chance because even a stick can be better than chance yeah so you know so we were talking about people carrying people you probably had a tough load to bear there you know i think eric should bring back live dead girl that was his peak you know chef's kiss like that's a character i think he'd have a lot of fun nowadays running because he hasn't touched her since the slam I think he'd do really well there, but that's just my bias. So I'm seeing though, like, of course, people are calling out trauma as your Twitter lesbian. And then your brother called out wicked as your Twitter lesbian. First of all, trauma wasn't a lesbian. First of doesn't all. matter. We don't really have yeah, to but, but a play. dude playing her makes it a Twitter lesbian. Does it? Yeah. Oh, that's what I was? Yeah. Also, wicked was an all that I ran like back when I was 13. Does that even count? More so. Oh, it's fair. underage Twitter lesbianism. I know, right? I mean, I was catfishing motherfuckers. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 
You remember back, you know, the old chat room days, ASL with the little slashes in between? No, never mind. It's always a that? risk, guys. Always a risk <laughs> with the three of you on here. <laughs> so so what, what what is the next question after that? You said you had a few good ones there. Or is it just me or wanting to roast poor Eric? Uh, so, yes, Angelica, I routinely acknowledge you're the only one that's not a Twitter lesbian. Uh, you're an no, she's an IRL female, lesbian. So you get a full pass on this crap. I mean, she has this huge crush on Bill, so that obviously makes her gay, right? So, so Jay Z coming in hot would like to know, Rude. <laughs> okay. How long it would take you to beat Tony Robes, and why is it thirty-seven seconds or less? <laughs> <laughs> keep people keep bringing up to this totally Rowan, Tony Rollins guy to me. I don't even know who he is, but I'm assuming he can't be any better than magnificent. So. I think that's pretty a uh, pretty accurate time frame game. Wouldn't be very difficult, you know. Magnificent doesn't think very highly of you, from what I've read. I mean, I don't even know who he is. I just know the name. So I just look. It's like a generic usage for a jobber. I just throw in magnificent. I can't think of anybody. You know, some people say Stuman. Some people say like Quint. If you know that deep cut, but like I'm just like magnificent. There's a generic jobber. Jobber name. Yeah. Quint, Quint used to threaten to rape my sister quite oh, a bit. Oh, so you remember Quint. Quint then, right? That's, that's I was his, I was his commish. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, he was more hated than Stuman, like universally, both on the board of Doom and in Sea Slam. Well, remember, he got the slammer to uh, ban the use of the name Katie Linneth. Yeah. Because it was his dead sister, and it turned into his dead dog. That's amazing. That he was writing movie reviews in honor of. Wow, that's... <laughs> so uh that's worse than thor man tony robes would like to say you should shut it and get on the boards and prove it um omega would like to know when you will be on the boards mm -hmm. so let me let me break this down one at a time and so, hold on hold on okay. before it gets off the feed and i don't see it mm -hmm. uh, according to magnificent you rude folded to him in the uce I have no recollection of this. My four Universal Carnage titles, you know, reigns. I mean, there's a lot of jobbers I had to beat, you know, so he might have been on the list of the short list or short bus, but I have no recollection of who this guy is. To go to the Tony Rollins question there. Um, <laughs> Rollins? Yeah, whatever his name is. Something to do with wanting me to get on the boards and what have you. The thing is, you can't look. At this point, the four of us are legends, right? We can all agree, right? The average fry cook at Denny's can't just go into the ring and challenge a legend. You have to pay your dues. So whoever Tony Jabroni is, he has to pay his dues first, and maybe I'll let him, you know, be in the same room as me. I don't know. Pay, he needs to pay his rent first. And what was the other question? Uh, Omega wanted to know when you were going to show up on the boards. Probably never, I'm afraid. I think um, I'm, I'm good with where I'm at. Uh, where are you? What's going on in Rude's life these days? All kinds of things. You know, I'm deliberately keeping it vague, but generally speaking, I just don't always have the time to sit down and read, you know, Kitty Hawk length posts like I used to. So, you know. Yeah, yeah right? Like, it takes a long time to read through a bunch of inane fucking prose just to get to the point, you know? So You still doing the uh, Mortal Kombat? No, no, I stopped doing that a few years ago, you know? But I got a couple yeah. top eights, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Somebody finished you. They, they did. Finish on him. I mean, that too as well, you know. I mean, why do you think I got married, you know? But anyway. um, Yeah, I'm not ashamed of that. You can bring up MK all you want, Jeff. I mean, sorry, Jason, it's fine. No, I didn't bring it up. No, I meant, I said Jason. I mean, I can corrected if you want my, me to. I corrected myself. <laughs> Keep up. Yeah, but I've got hair. Uh, it's true. You're right. You do have hair and you have a a backwards cap on? I don't know, bro. That's not, that's like kind of a early 90s thing. You might want to let that go. You're a bit old for that. Yeah. I, my goal Hulk now Hogan is. Hulk Hogan didn't need hair. hair. What's that? Hulk Hogan didn't need hair. Didn't Hogan get arrested recently for some like really big controversy? I'm trying to remember the, the details of that. But I swear he's been in trouble. No, no, he had a court case where he had to describe his dick to a, to a jury. That happened a while back. Is that a real thing? The people yeah. that sold his sex tape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And had a <laughs> radio host down in Tampa. And the N-word quite a bit on it, too. Yeah, yeah he, he did. So he got like has, 30 million or something. Techno has More money than he ever rude. made wrestling. Mm -hmm. 
Techno has confirmed that you guys have had a couple of matches and he has not won any of them, but he would like to. So I'm sure, look, I'm sure I'd want to win a, win a match against me too. It's a good scalp, but I mean, you got to make it happen. I don't think I have one. You don't? I you couldn't even beat be Homicide. Eve, Eve Riley hosed me there. Mm, yeah, she did. You got close, but... I had like a three-point sim advantage and like one bonus point. And mm -hmm. It was so bad, Jeff told me I could have Crusher come out and interfere in the match against me. <laughs> he tried. It's okay. You get a gold star for effort. Good job! You did it! Not really, though. That was the one where I threw you off the ramp, and then you immediately got up and brain busted me. On no it. Listen, man, you were going to be a douchebag, so I was going to be a douchebag just as hard. You got half the post sold, and I'm like, fuck this guy. You immediately put me in fuck this guy mode, so that was it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was one where Eve told you I, ha I had the bad neck, so it was really all Eve's fault. And then we had that impromptu match that ended in a draw, so like we never, uh, we never settled it. We never settled it, you know. So, you know. Weed Man seems Sounds to Sounds like one of us is in Weed Man's backyard now and won't. So Weed Man thinks that Rude uh, pulled out because he had to go superstar title with Weed Man. And that's why he's not coming back. I mean, that never happened. So I don't know what to tell him. Trust me, of all the people I'd be worried about beating, like... Any three of you, like, Weed Man doesn't even hit my radar, you know? I mean, I'm one of the reasons why people still talk about Kieran Curl. Can you, we acknowledge that? You can beat Excess. He doesn't post. Like, That's right. Look, he's a, <laughs> look, he's a former King of Wrestling champion. I got to give him some dues. because He's currently he was... fully active. <laughs> we can't tell. That is, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> he's playing at his own pace, guys. That's right. One post per decade. Dino's comment has become a full meme unto itself these days. Yeah. I've seen parenting at his own pace. I've mm -hmm. seen commissioning at his own pace. I've seen it all. The fact of the matter is, though, Kieran Crow needs to be happy that I'm so involved in his character's lore. You know, he should be paying me dues, you know, back pay. He should be well, thanking me for make, keeping him relevant all this time. Omega has astutely pointed out that Root has a lot of unsettled feuds, a lot of open, unsettled history that sounds like a bunch of people that were mad they couldn't beat me i don't know what to tell you they seem pretty settled on my end <laughs> so what, wait, what wait, are they mad because they bad uh, ooh, probably not <laughs> they're not they're not bad mm -hmm. uh the uh, exit now that's my it's my alarm to keep you know who out <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was <laughs> you know who <laughs> see we were having such a good conversation Jeff then he brought the chuckleheads on and now it's all fucked you knew fine. this was going to happen oh my gosh oh. so listen uh, Brennan says we Weed Man says on the original reboot card you had been active and it was scheduled because Rude was coming uh, to get Tristan that it was going to be Rude versus Weed Man and you bailed. I'm more important to do than put Weed Man over. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I mean, well, take a well, shit, take to role play with back. Weed Man. What did you rather do? What? So, uh, listen, he's, well, he's, he's, he's not mad at you because you're free. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure he dreams that I am. But whenever he has a dream of that, I want him to wake up and apologize to me. So there, is there like another... a character or an angle you would come back for? Is there like a character, an angle you would come mm. back for? An um, event? Maybe Alan Scott. He's pretty cool. I like Alan Scott. So you're a little thirsty then, huh? I mean, how can you not be? Have you seen Alan Scott? That's a, that's a dish there. You know, that's you a full drink on. Responsibly. That's a full you on. Don't over drink responsibly with Alan, or you get too thirsty. <laughs> that's true. That's true. A bit parched whenever he shows up. <laughs> oh, hey, we've got a, a question here. I'd actually like anybody's take on. Okay. 
If you were Jake Price, how would you get over? <laughs> Suicide. Of all the possibilities, it never occurred to me that you would jump in with that price. I was going to say sex work, but I mean, Price, is, price nailed it right there. <laughs> okay this is shades of this is why we broke the old yes. this, this is the podcast happens. one through eleven yeah. it was a douche black <laughs> hole just everything collapsed so into terrible. the whole game so terrible I think mm -hmm. the question was mo meant to be how would you get the character over <laughs> you raging collection of assholes well like I said sex work oh you know, well, any part in the storm? What I'm is sure. Jake Price's gimmick? Million Dollar Man. Oh, it's original. Okay. So, <laughs> let's see. What an ass. And Sex on... work. That's what uh, Buff Bagwell's up to now. Shut up. Yeah. He's a gigolo. No, you... come on. Listen, listen. He no, actually no, no, was no, in no. like a softcore porno first when he was still a wrestler. And he was like promoting it on WCW for a bit. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. He's in a softcore porno. And so it doesn't surprise me he's a gigolo now. That's amazing. It's not softcore anymore. <laughs> no, it's it's full throttle. Jake Price I, might need to take some lessons. I did see a question. I didn't see who it came from, but I feel obliged to ask XS. Uh, have you been married long enough that your wife's allowed to stay in the country? No. <laughs> okay. Well, what is, the, what is the legal amount, you know, number of years? You got all the stroke then, are So... If, so she's, we've been married 10 years. She's 21 now. So I guess she's. You know, if your wife ever sees one of these, you're done, right? Well, she, I had, when Gino's wife yelled at him, um, I was actually watching the podcast in bed. My wife was on her phone watching Netflix or something. And I made her take out her, uh, her headphones. And I asked her, I said, well, what do you think about these podcasts? I go, my friend's wife said, you know, wh whatever the words were, gay, gay, gay. And she's like, yeah, that's pretty much about right. <laughs> you guys are a bunch of fucking losers. <laughs> she's not wrong, though. Man. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Especially Tony Rollins or whoever that guy is. Robes. He's like a warm blanket you can wear. Fuzzy robe. Tony, Tony robe? Only fuzzy robes. Robes. Oh, man. Fuzzy like the cats I fuck? Cozy, just like them. Furry. Oh, there you go. Well, you there. I don't, don't actually know the fa origin Favorite of joke, breed but... of cat? Tabbies, without question. I'm disturbed that you had an answer. <laughs> I like cats. I mean, calicos are cool because they're traditionally female, but that doesn't, that, that gender is not a factor in this equation. All right? F favorite big cat? Ooh. I mean, tigers. Tigers are the best big cat ever. Like, it's not even a question. Yeah. Like, not one of my friends said, like, lions are probably, like, no, lions are fucking jobbers. All they do is lay around all day. Like, fucking send, tigers would fuck them up. Send a Twitter lesbian lions out to do the work. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. All they, but then again, you know, all they do is eat and fuck. So that's kind of like a pretty good life. Mm. So... Mav's asking, is my wife the only wife that thinks what we do is cool? I, I think the answer is yes, right? I mean, I, so. <laughs> I didn't know Mav had a wife, but congratulations. Uh, he does. She's wonderful. Fair enough. She's fair enough. No, She's but I mean, if she thinks it's cool. Wonderful enough cool. to humor him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's like, wow, that's so cool. And then like, she walks away. Oh, know? Brendan says... Uh, his partner thinks it's great as well. She even appeared as Naked Man in a video. So, fantastic. <laughs> uh, Philly says Angel Hunter came into the bar he works in and told the regulars what he does. Really? <laughs> that was funny. great. <laughs> wow, that's a very confident guy. Like, amazing. So, me and him and guys, we tag team partners. Yeah, man, we won Shut the up. internet belt. Like, I was a champ of the ICOW, bro. Like, come on. 
Hey, so here's the thing right now, the whole thread in our live stream is wheels going, when is Rude coming to Discord? And I don't know if that's on purpose to get our attention or because he's really bad with technology. Like, I don't no. know which it is. No, I don't like Discord. It's a shit. Does he not have access to his own brother? Why does he need to go through the podcast? That and... bitch has my number. He could call me anytime he wants, and he doesn't. And you would not answer. <laughs> I, like I mean, I'm there busy. might have been a couple of times he got my voicemail, but you know I me. Mean? <laughs> Sometimes you got better shit to do than talk to your brother. Like, Can what are you, you going to talk about? Text messages from him just so we could see the typos. <laughs> <laughs> I can't show you the type the text messages, but there are a few of them. I have to like kind of. Use context. In his defense, what are the odds of him getting the number right twice in a row? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, so he just has to click on the name now, so he doesn't have to actually manually do it. Yeah, but even then, he's calling, like, the guy right above you, the guy right below you. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. He's probably Sorry, I'm few... trying to call my brother. Sorry. sorry yeah, <laughs> he's probably had a few of those, you know. Uh Omega wants to know if you still like OTEP, and he says you should listen to his metal podcast. I subscribe to the um, the Facebook page that he's um, on. Yeah. Actually, so I get a lot of updates and a lot of the um, uh, bands that we <laughs> post about. I just haven't had fun time to sit down and listen to the podcast because, like, you want me to listen to some of the shitty dirt sheet stuff, and so I try to watch a little bit of that before I get nauseous. <laughs> then I watch the draft, and that's actually with interesting people except for some guy in the upper right. So, like, I'm, it's, I have a lot of time commitments, but I'll try my best to watch an episode or two. Um, if he wants, he can send me a message and tell me which ones he wants me to hear, and I'll give it a shot. You bet. We'll yeah. throw it down. All right. Uh, and I think you got that. Also, I think all of you need to know that Philly said, one, that's exactly the way the conversation went when Angel Hunter came in. And two, he had a uh, giant uh, Coke fingernail on his pinky. <laughs> I, I've seen pictures of Angel Hunter, and he looked like a, a like this cracked out black dude with long hair, from what I recall. <laughs> Philly, can you confirm that? That's kind of what I remember. Cat Williams, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, wait, wait, you hear cracked out black guy, and you think Cat Williams? What the fuck, sir? He said with long hair. Okay, okay. So the long hair is the difference. All right. <laughs> Does he look like he couldn't be on crack? <laughs> hey, hey, Colt, Colt would really Thank like you. us to circle back on this. Uh, and first of all, Philly says confirmed. What you asked price is confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, Colt would really like some clarity. He said, listen, I'll go back and watch the beginning later. Can we just clarify once and for all? Uh, Johnny Root, are you an anus? I'm not. You know, I uh, I leave that to better anus eye mm -hmm. than me. I'm I'm not clever enough for all that. Is it too late to get Tori on? Get an anus reveal. So so one thing about that, I know people have even said it's me. So I saw I think they when did I read the boards? Maybe a week ago or something like that, or maybe it was a little sooner. But they posted from their phone, right? And it shows you what kind of phone they have. It was like a Samsung, right? What gal it seemed like an old older galaxy or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I do have a Samsung Galaxy. Mm. But mine is brand new. I promise. But see, but see here's the thing, you've played Haley, so it's not above you to play someone with an anus, you know, one of the anuses. You could be one of them. Yeah. You know? So That's early also accusations, uh, other than when Tony decided to tell everybody it was me, and then I decided to tell everybody it was him, and then I owned it and said it was us. Um Early accusations were Price, were rude. Um, Mila, do you remember who else got thrown around? I mean, the one who won't be named was certain. I still think that's the most likely. Stone. <laughs> I actually have a question for Excess. So yeah. I don't know if you listened to the little draft podcast. You probably didn't. Let's be serious here. But there was this big argument about who your better character was between Excess and Haley. I was just about both, to ask that. There's a lot of arguments because some people preferred excess, some people prefer Haley. So I want to get it straight from the pedo's mouth. <laughs> which do you personally prefer playing and which do you feel is better? Well, excess was way more fun. I mean, Haley was relatively straight and competitive, right? She was bitchy, um, uber competitive. She was kind of like if excess never became somewhat, you know, entertaining. Yeah, entertaining and, you know, a mockery of of all that's bad 
of a, of a middle-aged white man, right? <laughs> like he was just the epitome of, of disgracefulness. So before so you became autobiographical. More... Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not, I won't deny that. No, but, um, but that's also why I couldn't run Haley for long periods of time. I would, you know, and wrestle after the first few years, I would bring her back a month before Stable Wars. I knew it was going to start, get mm -hmm. her revved up, get that going. And then a month after Stable Wars, I would shelve her. Well, I noticed she fact, was your your main stable wars person you would use, and that's usually when you kind of take up all the effort you saved throughout the year and just yes. then, you know you know unleash it in that one month, you know, just so the network could continue to win stable wars. I don't remember, but didn't you have like some consecutive years of winning that? Yeah, four years. Four right. years total. Yeah. Did who did whoever who eventually like took your spot, or did the event just end? I think the no. EC took it with <laughs> the lottery. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember oh, if it ever continued after. Uh, I, who was the last one that ran it? Was Key? I know it was Keebler for a while, and then the last else. one I remember I think was when Bino uh, was running it the last time. Yes, was he? Bino. Yeah. The last one I remember was when uh, Haley was feuding with Switchback Stable when yeah. I first come to the UCE. But I don't know if that was the last Stable Wars or not. Um, it might have been because the first one was the Blood Brothers were the main rival. Mm -hmm. The oh no, bro, the bro, Blood Brothers. The last the one team. is when I started the stable with Max, just so I could swerve him and get all the points for the network. Yeah, <laughs> and there was really no other. There was no. I didn't need to. So they <laughs> did they they let you take the points with you? Max went inactive. <laughs> yeah, if you start, if you were in control of the stable, you could take all the points you earned and put it into another stable. Mm -hmm. And I convinced a couple other like minor stables merge. This is our only chance. You have to merge with me. <laughs> I do recall. <laughs> Swerved them all. <laughs> and we won by like two thousand points. Yeah, that one was not even close. Mm -hmm. It was like Dream Team won over yeah. Angola. Oh my gosh, that's uh, <laughs> fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah, but Rude, those were good times with Switchback because Haley, him, and you. Yeah. Like a, a good three way feud going for like two, two and a half, three months. We did because, especially at that time, you and him were fighting for all the for the titles in for the for the points, and I didn't have a stable, so I just came in just to keep it from both of y'all just yeah. to be a dick. It was great, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that was that was a really great little run the three of us had going for a while, and then Katrina happened, and I had to step away for a while. So Katrina you know. should yeah. have wiped you out. It's from Wheelchair Eric, isn't it? it is. <laughs> I don't know how 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 like buoyant are wheels. You know, Got maybe those like, inner tubes in them. Yeah, maybe you could like pump them up like the like the Air Jordans, you know, back in the day. You could like pump the wheels and just float. Oh, I had some of those Reebok pumps. That... Yeah, exactly. But like for his wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> Except he keeps hitting the deflate button on accidents. Well, yeah, of course. You have to yeah, look. I have a question for him. How many floaties for Eric? How many floaties can he fit on his wheelchair? <laughs> Is he in the chat still? I'll let you know if he answers. Okay, I thought he was in the chat, so I'm just curious. While we're at it, Philly says uh, Philly says Clarence was your best character. <laughs> he was. A lot of people probably don't remember him because he was sort of short lived in, in Russell, but he was the the black <laughs> <laughs> character who thought every single thing in the world was racist and against the black man. And it, it was comical. It was fun. I mean, that would it probably could go over well today, also. But I would just get into too much trouble. You, you should, you you should so play it on Twitter. Come on, you can't be any stranger to that excess. <laughs> you, I remember talking to you. You got so pissed they wouldn't let you say honky anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cracker honky. It's like what? <laughs> like what? They just killed my character. What am I gonna do? Yeah, I think I think I I shelved them that month or the month after. Yeah, Those aren't even that bad. Like, I'd be fine with it. Your uh, your brother says two per wheel. <laughs> and he said it 
four times. I mean, that's on brand, right? <laughs> he was just hitting enter. Uh... <laughs> His hand seized on the keyboard. Unbelievable. So, so, so is your your final answer? Excess is the better character. Yeah, because we do have the whole Haley genocide marriage, <laughs> which apparently Marlo just decides to end on a keystroke. Just man, Jason, that's so what did uh, she, uh, she became a nun. Personal, huh? Was that it? Yeah. What? She left you and became. She left you and became a nun. Was that it? Yeah, she. The story was I, I ignored her too much, and she just went into hotel rooms with guys, mm -hmm. and the only book in there was the Bible when she started reading it, and. I remember there was one point in time where Gino and XS were like in Mexico. No, sorry, Gino and Haley were in Mexico doing something with orphans, and Haley kept like pressuring Gino to have a baby. I think something yeah, to that effect. Sophia. No, she stole. Yeah, oh! she stole an orphan. Yeah. It was a sponsor. It was sponsor wars. That's right. And then I had we adopted the baby, and then like months later, I took it to the doctor, and the doctor discovered a fibia, and it turned out to be <laughs> Gino's. Actual biological kid that he knocked up before he met Haley. She's got to be old enough to uh, to dance now, Sophia. She might she might be old enough to wrestle now. There yeah. there are uh, aspects of your backstory that are just a telenovela. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it would fit really well in Mavs Fed? I'm 100 percent saying that. Look at the heat getting oh. thrown. They're all they're all gonna kill me, I'm telling you. Well, I don't think like you haven't thrown nearly as much heat as I thought you were gonna throw. It's it's a little chuckleheads throw them off. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They did. They they just threw off my mojo. I don't know what to tell you, you know. Just wasn't ready for the chuckleheads to come in firing. Uh, well, you know, I, 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 I do have to mm -hmm. legitimately apologize for my chucklehead antics in the past. If it you know, turned you off from the podcast or turned you off from the game. That it wasn't my intention. Well, I appreciate that. Um, the only time I was ever really super. Wait, you think he like, meant it? Oh, are you, are you I'm, talking I'm, to him? I'm being, I'm being <laughs> genuine. Oh well, I appreciate genuine that. Jason Miller. You know, um, I that the whole thing with the one podcast we can't talk about did kind of trigger me a bit, but that was my own fault for having a certain person on. So you know. Yeah. There was the time where you came on late and I had you interview Stan Daniels for your own job. And you didn't realize <laughs> That's you right. doing that. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Well, I'm not apologizing. So <laughs> don't, don't expect one from me. No, I would never. Look, if you did that, I would wonder if you were possessed or something. Exactly. And look, you know, any you. If I if I don't fuck with you, it means mm -hmm. I don't like you. Right. Unless so that means you must love Brad Rhodes then, right? Well, there's a lot of him to love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all four of us could love love him at the same time. Leave Brad Rhodes alone. Very Who's wise. getting the belly button though? Oh, that's me. I got maps. I, mean, I still got maps. At that point, wouldn't it be a yawning chasm? We could probably hit more than one person in the butt, belly button, right? <laughs> It would just kind of suck the, things in. This is going to end up being the only podcast where I kick all the guests off. This is going to generate new searches on Porto tonight. <laughs> exactly. Poor Brad Rhodes. Don't watch our podcast, Brad. I don't know what else. Don't watch it, Brad. It's not good. It's not good, Brad Rhodes. Hey, bro. As long as that R button works on the boards, that's all that matters. Let's do it. Let's get it, Brad. Mm-hmm. Oh, you could be the Wiccan again. That was something. You don't need the R button for that. Yeah, exactly. And, you, and people won't even know this list because you're like, I'm the Wiccan. I'm supposed to say this. What if his name was Rickon the whole time? Oh, shit. <laughs> and he That's was using like a talk to text lore. thing. And we just never knew. We just gave him a gimmick. That is. <laughs> My name is Bobby Rickon. <laughs> name is Porter Rickon. Colt is coming to Brad's defense, so. What did he say? He just said, leave him alone, guys. Actually, cult us assholes. I mean, that that's pretty Brad's fair. in here? Oh, jeez. Sorry, Brad. So, uh, Jeff, is there anything you wanted to wrap up with, or? Yeah, so I, 
Well, I've totally lost control of this podcast. Bringing on the chuckleheads was not my best plan. You knew that was going to happen. Let's be serious here. I had a pretty good. This is the <laughs> most fire, rambling. Fire in a podcast. podcast. <laughs> the most rambly, nonsensical, unfocused podcast I've done in ages. It felt like a reslut show. <laughs> it sure wasn't. Well, I mean, it was still better than watching the dirt sheet, though. Let's be honest. I like Lars. And he chicken. doesn't want to say it, but he's thinking it. You can tell by the look of Jeff. No, face. Lars. Lars is great. He is great. Lars and the chickens are awesome. The chickens are amazing. Yeah, yeah but I mean, look, Lars is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Is all I'm saying. Gotcha. All right. Here's what I want to know, because uh, we've got uh, you know Miller, who's basically been dead, even though he's on the boards. Um, we got Price, <laughs> who is fully active, and nobody can tell. And we got Rude, who's not playing at all. So it's all Are about people disliking excesses posts as soon as they go up. Maybe <laughs> everybody's just dis we <laughs> discovered, by the way, that you all can those dislike Twitter posts. lesbians that are <laughs> <laughs> they all join. cancel excess non consenting post. We we discovered that you can dislike posts enough and it'll hide them. Oh my god, that's <laughs> going to be abused. Well, it did because uh. Robes was running an angle where he would put up his fake title mm -hmm. and have a, a role play match, and then <laughs> Titus would judge it. And so Robes always won. And so I want to say Val said to me, like, let's have the Fed vote on every post. And so we'll vote up for Samite and thumbs down for Robes. And none of us realized if we put enough thumbs down, the post mm -hmm. just disappeared. That's awesome. So that's how we found it. That's rife for exploitation. I love it. But wait, that means we can do that with uh, Omega's post, right? We can do it with anybody's post. <laughs> yeah. All I'm right. Come back just a lot for that. of reasons no. to come back and play. You know, of all the yeah. white heat I thought you would generate, I did not think that the person you would set on fire the most would be Lars. He is bitter that you're throwing shade at the dirt sheet. I like Lars. I just don't like the three chuckleheads he has on with him. <laughs> He's got you don't like Kieran Crow? I think Kieran does a great job. I mean, Kieran exists. He takes up space. Does that count as a great job? Uh, we're just on a different page on this one. I, he definitely does a great job. He, he does. I'm, I'm just fucking with him. I know. But anyway, I'm supposed to defend him. You're not. PTSD. Okay, so let me get back to my... But how is... How is Titus still awake? Does he not work? Does he not have a job? I mean, do you see how he dresses on the show? I mean, it looks like a bum. So, wax on, wax off. <laughs> this is Titus' job. <laughs> wax on, wax off. Um, we have, so the three of you have about the same level of activity. <laughs> um, what would it take? I look at Miller, it's just like, what, what do I got to do? Uh, what would it take, like, who would the angle be with? What would be kind of the main story or angle or thing? And what would be the character that it would take to get you kind of back to at least 80% of your best output? So one post a month? Yeah. I mean, that's 80 for you. <laughs> yeah. I need I want, some moment to think about it. I'll let someone else answer first. I want a feud with the Twitter lesbian. <laughs> The same one that lost. The, yes. If they showed up, you'd play. The Rocky Dennis looking one. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> sign him. Sign him, power base. How do we get that guy? <laughs> All right. That's a fair answer from you. Because mm -hmm. I would just have to post once and everybody else would annihilate her also. So it would be easy. Almost certainly. I got, I got some... Uh, White heat by association for playing yes, for being at on, on Twitter. And it also because I, I jumped in because somebody mentioned you had the same picture as somebody else. And then it all just turned. It turned quickly. This sounds like bog standard Twitter drama. Pretty much. That's why we just Twitter's a hellscape. You gotta avoid it. Hey, um, Brendan, that's a great question. I'm going to come back to that after I get the answers from, from Miller and Rude. Do you want to go uh, next, Jason? Do we kind of have an Impractical Jokers thing going on here? I don't know. 
Maybe. I don't know. Go, Maybe. Rick. All right. Um, so when I did that little brief stint when we first started the comeback, I liked the far right, you know, pundit route. I thought that was a really cool angle. I wouldn't mind going back to that and revisiting it. If nothing else, it gives me an excuse to call Ben Shapiro a cunt. And I love doing that. Um, <laughs> customer, you said? Yeah, customer. You're right. You're right. A mag customer. Magnificent customer. Yeah. You know, you can call him a customer. <laughs> you know, um, but other than that, I mean, it would just depend on who else is on the board and whether I could make sure I could commit. Because I don't want to do like a half cocked of return like excess. I'd actually want to actually put in decent effort. So a lot of it would be time commitments. So I think the other question that Brendan put up that I thought was a good one, so I, I'm going to extend and, and ask it is um, for, especially for uh, the people who aren't playing right now, they just opened CWA under the theory of it being a much slower paced Fed. Would you consider playing a new character in CWA where you're maybe only posting like twice or three times a week? So wait, has CWA become the retirement home effectively? Well, it's slower paced for so so that people who can't keep like the boards got stupid for a while. That sounds like a retirement home. So it's also supposed to be our landing place for an eFed player trying to try us out. Right. Oh, how's that working out? So far, we have <laughs> one. <laughs> Good job, guys. Big, big bad Bob. Bad Bob Andrews. Shout out to Big Bad Bob. Oh. Since you have Kieran in the chat, ask him a question for me. Does he still talk to that guy Crash Test Greg that he brought over? I like Crash Test Greg. Because he was yeah. shaping up to be pretty decent, actually. Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, That's a great question. You know, so whenever he gets the answer, and I'm, I'm just curious. But, uh, I mean, a slower fit would be all right, I guess, if you wanted to be retired. Depends on how you come in, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. Like, I couldn't run rude in that because he needs to be the center of attention. He wouldn't. <laughs> Cough with that. But I could probably run like an alt, like Nigel Carly, CDBA right there. So uh, somebody mentioned, you know, oh, you were mentioned and Jay-Z's on here saying, I was mentioned, but I didn't take the brunt of the heat. You know why you didn't take the brunt of the heat, Jay-Z? Because you were mentioned and you didn't nibble on the hook. You didn't take the bait. That's good. <laughs> like learn to not take the bait because exactly. the only That's thing Titus does is throw bait in the water. Mm-hmm. You can't, you can't go, he's chumming the water, she can't bite. Wait, did Jay-Z apologize to Titus yet? Because I, I think I mentioned that in Discord. If he just apologizes to Titus, they can Of course apologize. you did, because you're throwing bait in the water. Because obviously he did something wrong to upset everything. So Brendan says that Crash Test is bucket. part of a different wrestling game that, that Brendan's an admin in. Okay, he, I wish he'd come back to FedEx because I really liked what he was doing. He was he started out kind of rough, but he was progressively getting better. You know, uh, Jay Z said he did apologize to to Titus. That a boy. I actually like Jay Z on the podcast. I think he's great on the podcast. Yeah. I think if he was that chill all the time, we'd have less drama. Right, that's why I was surprised to see that he was the one that got all bent out of shape about. Wait, 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 wait. Which one's Jay Z on the podcast? He's you trolling you, old man. That's all he's doing. Well, he's doing a good job of it. Um, you know, on the Resluts show, the guy that's doing like most of the like talking about matches, filling the, the dead air. By, the one looks like I got stung by a bunch of bees. The one that's not me, and the one that's not has a neck. Benny showed oh. up with no neck on yeah. the last one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, okay, I've seen him before. Yeah, that's that's really that was he's, Benny at his best. I mean, or, Jay sorry, seems uh, adequate. Kansas at his best. You know. There I hasn't give been a, a Benny up. sighting in a while. And a thumbs up for me matters. Neither one of you caught that. I the thumbs up part I did. I just thought I'd... it was a, it was an adequate joke. <laughs> totally <laughs> adequate. I commend you. You motherfuckers. By the way, anyway. boy, is that who you married? Uh yeah, but not anymore. Don't. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't good answer. No. So what we're happened? not going down this road. Don't. I will kill now, the podcast listen, right now. We will talk about it after the, <laughs> the show's off if you want. We have an after show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think post for sluts. We're, we're gonna have to have a post, post for show. sluts. I love it. We gotta go. 
Thank you all. Uh, this was super productive. We'll talk to you next time. No Ask Excess? Wait, do we have questions for Ask Excess? Oh, I would love a question. We got people two. online that can ask Excess. Do you have people online? <laughs> Is there a question for Johnny Excess? Would we are there any live Ask Excess segments? Oh, I, I see not. one about I see one for, about Rude's ex-wife. No. Nope. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> Hard pass. <laughs> All right. Classy as always, let me tell you. I uh I'm looking because Shreddy says he's got one, but he's he's not asking it. So. <laughs> Just typing all the caps for the last 15 minutes. Okay. Wait, who's Shreddy? That's uh Eliza the Prophet. Who? Eliza the Prophet. Who? Yeah, I got it. Who who? So here are the questions as they're blasting by. Uh, mm -hmm. Excess, was this the worst podcast in recent memory? This one was probably the best in recent memory. All right. A lot uh, of great topics covered. I think the other one that I saw, Dear Excess, was Rude's ex-wife named Genocide. <laughs> <laughs> was that spelled with a J? Was. <laughs> oh, funny. Guys, that's wrong. That's underage. Yeah, it's off limits. Would you rather watch your parents bang every night for the rest of your life or join in once to make it stop? <laughs> Why not both? Why not join in every time? <laughs> you can watch the video. Yeah. Uh, at, Lars asks, what tag team in CCW do you want to roll with? The BFFs or the talent Nazis? Ooh, that's good. Well, good question. if I was actually playing and had that dilemma, it would be both. And then have have Ed just keep beating the shit out of Excess for being a fag and, and oh, tagging with Rory. Right. Um, so Shreddy finally asked, uh, Dear Excess, why do I hate you? It's hurtful. Um, I mean, you have a I daughter? Don't, I don't know. Did, did, did I date his daughter at one point? I don't think what you do could be called dating. Well, taking what's mine, dating, same thing. There was a there was a date of the incident. <laughs> you know? Yes, there's a calendar involved. Excess asked, uh, uh, Shreddy asked again, Excess, would you ever tag team with me in both wrestling and in perhaps another way? <laughs> in other way? So, sloppy second Shreddy? Oh, Omega would like to know Excess... Um, we know you said which one you think is best. He would like to know uh, which one is your favorite to play. Oh, it says excess easily. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Legs would like to know, dear excess, can I get the two hours of my life back that I just wasted? <laughs> They're gone. You're fucked. Yeah. You chose to be here. Okay. It's your fault. You could have left at any time. Wheel on to bed, Eric. Yep. Oh, wait, no, that's a different Eric. Legs okay. is the one that can, yeah, Eric's the wheels. Okay, we've oh, got another was, one. Oh, that was math? See, the, the, my fault. it's like a walking person and it's a K? Yeah. <laughs> and if the wheels, it's a C. It yeah. Looks like, it looks like a wheel. Damn it. Excess, who's the one character you never got to role play with that you want to? Shit. Um... Off the top of my head, I can't, I can't think of I it. knew he wasn't going to think of a goddamn thing. You know what? I didn't get a chance. <laughs> Hold he on, wasn't guys. going to think of a goddamn thing. This no, is got... a really good one. Don't let it go by. Dear right. Excess, how do I get my brother to call me? <laughs> <laughs> Divorce him. <laughs> That's gold. I think on that note, uh, <laughs> we're going to cut. But. All right. Thank you guys for being on. And uh, I mean, sure, we'll do it again at some point. Really Serenade us out, Miller. That, that, um... <laughs>